strange Fantastic. new world. A strange new world. <laughs> Star Trek, the original series, The Cage, was very old. Mm. Star Trek, the original series, The Cage, had a very, very poor vision of the future. I mean, paper reports, really? Interesting question. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I thought so. Yeah, yeah, apparently so did Siri. Uh, or Alexa or whoever it was. It's Siri. Uh, Star Trek, the original series, The Cage, uh, was what made me realize that Gene Roddenberry's scariest alien was an adult aging female. <laughs> <laughs> Same, dude. Oh, gosh. Well, Star Trek, the original series, The Cage, is what I imagine beige would be like if it was a TV series. Very nice. <laughs> Hey, everybody, yeah. welcome to Falling Towers Watch the First Podcast, the podcast in which we watch the first episode of a series so that you don't have to. By the way, I remembered what I was going to start with. I was going to say the cage was fascinating, but I didn't. So, ah! uh, oh well. <laughs> Too late. Uh, yep. Today, obviously, Editing we're doing exist. a review of Star Trek, the original series pilot, Finally. 1964, I believe it is, the cage. We are here with co-captain, co-creator, co-star, Michael Kenyon Rosenberg. We're also joined by, you know, actress extraordinaire, best smile in the world. That's Bridget Fitzgerald, Smiley Bridge. Hi, hello. Uh, She's also a two-time Emmy nominee for meteorology. This is meteorologist Katie Nicolau. Hi, everyone. All right. And my name is Ryan T. Husk. Fascinating. Oh, you got to give yourself a better intro than that. You hyped us up. That was pretty good, I thought. I thought it was. Make up something cool for the team. Yeah, man. Ryan. Number one podcast host of two podcasts. Count them two. Yeah. Mm. The two. incredible Ryan T. Husk. Do you think go? Our viewership dropped down 80% in six seconds. Oh, that's okay. I know. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, they're coming okay. back. We'll bounce back. We'll bounce back, baby. It's fine. All right. Fine. So everybody at home, if you'd like us to review a show in the comments below, just type in WTF and the show you'd like us to review. For example, you could say WTF Enterprise or WTF Discovery, for example. That stands for Watch the First enterprise because that's what we do we watch the first episode of a series so that you don't have to um this was a tough one because we're like wait a minute is it the cage is it the man trap what's the first episode of star trek luckily we did a poll a twitter poll uh back in february and we asked the fans what do you consider to be the first episode of the original series and the winner was the cage so that's what we're going with and here it comes fast and furious right michael Mm -hmm. so let's play our very first game which is called predictions and that's the only thing we call it predicaments it's actually called the actual name so we also pulled twitter i mean i pulled myself on twitter and i answered that that this segment is called predicaments because we put ourselves in a predicament by making our predictions. The only thing Michael is pulling is our leg. Um, Ah, thank you. There's another 80% drop. Yeah, I would say 99. (laughs) I think Ryan and I are the only ones watching it. That's almost like half. (laughs) Anyway, so let's have some fun starting now with that very first game. Michael and I have known each other like practically forever. Um, so we can usually predict if the other person liked it or didn't like it. Michael We've known each other about as long as the Telosians have been alive. Mm-hmm. Ah, mm-hmm. nice reference. Mm-hmm. False. <laughs> Michael, I predict that you like this episode because you like corny old stuff and you like Star Trek and I feel like you wanted to like it. So I think you did like it. Katie, uh basically the same except without the corny old stuff uh bridget 
basically the same, including the corny old stuff. I think everybody here liked it from, from pretty, pretty high to very high. Uh, but that's my predictions. What do you think, Michael? Well, I know for a fact that Ryan is not a fan. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to out you, Ryan. I know for a, for a fact mm-hmm. Ryan is not a fan of the original series of Star Trek. And that is um, a bold I, statement, sir. I know it. I know it. It's fact. I know Who it. Who is this wow. guy? He needs oh. to boldly go. <laughs> bold, I'm boldly going to the bottom of the oh, ocean. Ryan <laughs> what? And uh, kind of like trash him in front of all of his Star Trek fans. Mm. Um, yeah. Wow. Uh, and so wow. I think Ryan found this episode slow and boring. And the, the joke at the end, he found corny and um he didn't laugh at all at it and um yeah i don't think that he cared much for it i think that he appreciated that this is the first beginning of star trek this is what they they look you know they, I, don't, I don't know if this one ever aired back in the 60s but uh, you know they made it and like this is what they they use as like a proof of concept and so i know he appreciated that i think he thought that the set design was stupid <laughs> and um so i think he's going to give this uh, lo- he, it may get a little bit of a bump just because of star trek out um, of fear but i think yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly hmm. but yeah other overall i don't think he cared for it um katie kind of showed her hand a little bit when she said it was beige um so i'm going oh, to just been a comment on the color scheme yeah, but no, I think that you are going to be less than enthusiastic about this first episode. And then Bridget just looks confused because she's got the actually Kirk in her background and Chekhov, and they weren't a part of this ep- first episode. You're <laughs> calling everyone out, aren't you? Here's the thing. Okay? But I think that she no, liked no, this no, first no. episode. Here's of the, the thing. You want to talk about my background? Okay, we have to take it to you. Here's why I did this. Terrell because Owens. I always... Yeah, Terrell Owens on this. Let's take a Terrell Owens and address this. Okay. I always <laughs> wanted to have the little like, you know, communicator as a background for Zoom. And I thought that would be cool. And I could not find it. So I hastily whipped this together by like doing some quick Photoshop. And yeah, Kirk's in it because <laughs> I wish Kirk was in this episode, but we'll get to that. <laughs> Ooh, Whoa. There you go. <laughs> All right. Maybe so I should change uh... my prediction. <laughs> What are your predictions <laughs> since you're on a roll, Bridget? Okay, great, wonderful. Back to me. So <laughs> I think uh, I feel like you guys probably helpfully addressed each other because you guys have known each other for forever. So if like Michael said you probably didn't like it, then I'm gonna hop on that train because I'm like he probably knows you really well. You've been friends for a while. I feel like you can. You're like the the Hoda and the Kathy Lee, or or whatever it is to each other, the yin <laughs> to the yang. Um, so I feel like uh, in in that respect, that probably yeah, you probably guessed Michael. Uh, I don't forget what you said. Oh man, did I do I really zone out when you speak? <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> Michael, Most I think I can. think Michael did like it. I feel like Michael enjoyed it. Um, I feel like Katie, <laughs> she did out herself by saying it's bland. Like, girl, I don't say things are beige just like by happenstance. Like, I definitely don't accept that as a compliment, not even if it was the color of my I skin. live in <laughs> Iowa. That's a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm guessing middle to middle to not so much. Middle-ish mm. is exactly where okay. you would rate this. I feel like you're you're a five on this. And again, uh, we'll find out what I thought on this later. Mm-hmm. This By the way, Michael and I both episode. fight over yin. Neither one of us wants to be yang. So it's a real <laughs> yeah, problem. It's a real sore no, spot. I'll be yang. yang. Great... I'll always be yang. Yang, yeah. yin. There you go. Okay. Uh, Katie, what are your predictions, by the way? Well, I agree with Bridget. You guys have known each other for long enough. Honestly, probably mm-hmm. longer than I've been alive. So yep. I think, <laughs> Ryan, you probably were a little less than uh, lukewarm for this episode, just because comparing to modern Trek. Uh, Michael, from what I've seen on other Watch the First, you probably enjoyed this. And Bridget, I think you probably appreciate it for what it is, but also are kind of like mm, a little bit. So I'd say middle of the road for you. Mm-hmm. Now, everybody at home, 
it's time for you to make your predictions. Do you think I liked it? Do you think Michael liked it? Do you think Bridget, <laughs> the feisty Bridget liked it? Do you think Katie? The, I'm a Latina in space. I'm bringing spice everywhere. Yeah. Katie, I, the I subtle like spice insulter, Bridget. liked it. Uh, you, <laughs> you got some some pretty good hints. You got everybody gave you some good hints. Every so, in the comments below or in the live chat, make your predictions. Let us know if you think we liked it. And while you're typing that right now, Michael Kenyon Rosenberg is going to tell us all what the heck is this show even a boot. In the 23rd century, the crew of the USS Enterprise explore the galaxy and defend the United Federation of Planets. But in this episode, Captain Pike is held prisoner and tested by aliens who have the power to project incredibly lifelike illusions. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now yep. <laughs> I'm still recovering from that. I'm like, I soaked it all up. That was good stuff. Like, um, yeah, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> so now we're going to go ahead, you guys, and play a very fun game that I like to call what we expected versus what we got, in which we compare and contrast what we expected versus what we got. Yeah. But right now in the live chat everyone's writing what the real name of this segment is called when we when we compare what we expected versus what we got what we're really giving is an expectation ah, which is what we call nice. this segment nice. it's, that's nice. it's both expecting and getting so it's expectation and this is why we it love works. katie and bridget so I much those were it. two of the most <laughs> polite <laughs> responses i've ever seen no they like nice it. nod not a I, smile. I've never used that phrase, but now I'm going to try and make a take off, you know, <laughs> in this picking up my drink. Why not? What's my expectation, everyone? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I hope it's my latte, but we're going to find out, won't we? It was. It was ah. <laughs> oh, boy. I like that a lot, too. Oh, oh gosh and people <laughs> ask me why i come back on this show over and over and it's for reasons they like ask this. you that because y'all are fun mm -hmm. they do in the live chat and in fact they're writing it right now i was hoping <laughs> though that bridget <laughs> was going to say in starbucks an espress getchens but we'll see Aww. we'll see how that nope. pans out anyway the point is it's just like nope <laughs> uh so let's go ahead and do that so we're not embarrassing ourselves further. Michael Kenyon Rosenberg, before you watch this first episode of the original series entitled The Cage, and by first episode, we mean the pilot specifically. Right. Mm -hmm. Episode zero. I wonder if people are going to say then that means we should also watch The Man Trap at some point, since that's kind of technically... Also we'll just have to episode. see what they say. We'll just have to actually look well, at the we'll comments down below. WTF. Yeah. Right. Right. They'll have to put it in the comments below for us to consider it. The live chat does not count for but WTF is, suggestions. Is the Star what? Trek franchise what? even worth okay. bending okay. the rules for? Yeah. Yes. It is. How is yes. that bending <laughs> the rules? There are two pilots. One yeah. unaired and one aired. Yeah, yeah one, one is was for a Pike rules. series and one, one was for a Kirk for... series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's the way true. I look at it. You make good sense. All right, so, so uh, this is this is just the strange new worlds pilot. <laughs> you you guys saying. all make make very good points, uh, Michael. So everybody, let us know in the comments. What did you expect? Yeah. I expected a slow, interesting, a bit boring at times fascinating cool bad show <laughs> all right that's a heck of a description okay katie speaking of descriptions before you watch this first episode or pilot what did you expect i expected it to be very colorful kind of cheesy the kind of show that you go and you watch just to point at and laugh and say, ha ha, my parents watch this. And yeah, <laughs> that's about what I expected. Woo. Throwing jabs. Bridget's getting mm. pissed. What did you expect <laughs> before you watched this first episode? 
Oh man. Okay. Well, here's things that I thought had to be there. Obviously I was like all the characters. And then I was like, <laughs> probably in space. <laughs> and then I said, fun 60s costumes. So yeah. that's what I went in. I was like, three things that I was like, hey, surely there will be these three things. Wow, this is fun, <laughs> you guys. Let's make this last forever. I'm really enjoying this. Um, it makes me think, I wonder if you guys even watched, had seen the first episodes prior to this. I'll tell you what I, I expected. I had not seen this, this clips. unaired pilot before I watched this. I didn't know much going into it other than it was unaired. Michael, had mm. you? I'll talk about that. Ooh, <laughs> save Ooh. it for later. All right, Ooh. well, I'm going to spoil it and say, <sighs> when I was going to watch this thing, I didn't remember if I had actually seen this episode or if I just seen clips or if I just seen some of it. Because as a Star Trek fan, if you're a really big Star Trek fan, you kind of just know everything about Star Trek. Even if there's an episode you hadn't seen somehow, you still know all about it because everybody talks about it. So I'm like, have I even seen this? And upon watching it, well, wait, this is I guess what I you should, expected. I guess I shouldn't say that. Yeah. But basically, I mean, you can transition into it if you no, want. No, well, no, well, basically, what I'm trying to say is I still don't know if I'd ever seen it before. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about the show itself. So I don't know if I'd ever seen it before, but I knew yeah. of it. I knew this, mm -hmm. these jellyfish things. I knew Pike and Spock. I knew there was a cult and I knew there was a number one. I know all the lore of it. Um, and so I expected that it would be like, you know, charming, interesting, okay, kind of fun um, and 45 minutes. But that's what we expected. <laughs> <laughs> Same. boy were you wrong michael what did what did you actually get uh first of all i think the rest of the original series episodes are all 50 minutes also so by the way um i got a slow interesting a little boring at times fascinating cool bad sexist <laughs> show from the 60s what what how dare they are you kidding me it's so off brand that's so wild uh you two are just playing off of each other i love it yeah it's amazing <laughs> uh we should just go like this then we should just do this and that when they play off each other <laughs> here we go hey high five ready no nope, otherwise so, other side wait, wait other nope, side now i think oh nope, hold on there we go Okay. There we go. I was wrong. Bye -bye. I was wrong. We shouldn't do that. Right. Oh my goodness. Um, okay. So anyway, um, that was a beautiful mess. Where I are love we? the chaos. I live in the well, chaos. Right, what did right you now get? We're, we're going to see what Bridget got. Yeah. Bridget, oh, what, did you, what did you actually get? We know what you expected. Yeah. What did you actually I get? expected all the characters what a lie <laughs> what a crock <laughs> all i got was mr spock <laughs> i accidentally run but you're welcome you're welcome star trek fans um it was indeed in space so i did get that uh and there were fun 60s costumes there was a lady who was entirely green and also <laughs> more space zoomies per square inch than I thought I was going to get. Because that, that shit went by once, it went twice, it went twice again, 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 it's over here, it's over there. And I was like, yeah, get zoomy. I, I really enjoyed that part. I was just like, yeah, that's good. That's good times. <laughs> All right. I like the zoomies too. That was really <laughs> it cool. was great. I love the zoomies. Um, I'll tell you what I got. I got a show. No, Katie, we need to hear what Katie got though first. Katie. Oh, I thought we already Please. God, I'm so lost. Everybody's <laughs> picture got moved around when I did that. And then four people I'm already oh, lost. Okay. Katie, up. please okay. forgive me. What did what you, you actually doing? get? Oh, well, I think you already know. I got beige. So little <laughs> color. Like, I'm like, come on, you guys just went through the Wizard of Oz renaissance. You went from black and white to color. Use it. And I just, oh, it was so. Mm. But also, this, I got a show 
that has successfully done what nothing else in the past few weeks has done for me, which it lulled me to sleep. So I'm very <laughs> appreciative of it. Um, <laughs> I, I have had I've had insomnia for like the past few weeks mm-hmm. and this might have been the cure. So I'm oh, grateful wow. for this episode. Wow. So you know what to do now if you can't Shots fall asleep. Fired. Shots it's, it's nothing fired. against the show. I felt very comfortable watching it. I was in a safe place. So I mm-hmm. just naturally went to sleep. Yeah. Um, do you remember what yeah. part you fell asleep at? Less After the main I title remember. <laughs> <laughs> I remember because I was messaging with my brother and I'm like, I'm just thinking, I'm like, oh, hey, look, there's aliens and their veins throbbing, kind of like yours when you get upset. And then I just kind of fall asleep. So I think it was like maybe a quarter of the way through. Pretty early on. Yeah, I, I did to to my credit. I woke back up and I restarted it and I watched it again. Oh, what a well, hero. rested this time. <laughs> you know, me, the, the, the chivalrous Star Trek watcher. <laughs> Speaking of which, everybody at home, stick around. We're not just going to bash this show all day, starting with me. So I'll tell you what I actually got. I, well, I don't know. I got a show. Yeah, you, you're going to keep talking on that same positive vibe? I got a show where about two thirds of the way through it, I understood why this pilot did not get picked up. I felt it did get as, picked up. Well, it did. They just two years later asterisk. they restarted it. You know, yeah. I, it's not really like this pilot did. The show did, right. um, and I think the reason is because, at least in my opinion, I felt as though it wasn't quite an episode and wasn't quite a movie. It needed some fifth. It need fifteen minutes less or twenty minutes less cut out of it to be an episode. And to move more quickly and to not be boring or, (laughs) or add a more compelling B story, you know, B plot or C plot, like, you know, the bad guys are another bad ship is coming to raise the stakes or whatever in order to add 15 minutes and make it a movie. And it was kind of neither. So I was kind of confused by that, but I enjoyed it. Did you, you literally just said it was boring. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Boy being well, bored. To be fair, to be fair, like Ryan, I felt similar when the guy, the captain, uh, Captain Pike, was like, yeah. "Let's just not look into it." Like his first yeah. response to like this, this distress signal was like, "Let's just not look into it." I was like, "I see why they swapped captains." <laughs> like this guy doesn't want to trek. Like you got to trek. So like what? Are, why are you not trekking? everything. <laughs> Yeah, everything we know about Star Trek is like, oh, someone sneezed on a planet. Let's go check. Like, yeah. this dude's like, eh, maybe. I just don't feel like it. Yeah. They I changed know. a lot of things. Like, and I, I feel like for the better. Although I did enjoy yeah. that one shot when they're like, we're following the Captain Pike to where he is. And we see like the, the, the hallways and someone's like, wearing shorts and chilling i'm like is this the cruise yeah. it looks like right. blanket bingo in space <laughs> i was like yeah. call me all star trek i just want them in a uniform you know what i mean <laughs> like and yes. not like that turtleneck like the girl on the the deck is wearing oh, because that gosh that felt like that's a particular a... cage i was like don't do that to yourself why would mm-hmm. you do that mm-hmm. and there was, was no red shirts yeah there was a turtleneck yeah. on the 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 girl the women have one. the turtleneck yeah the oh turtleneck right right the right right scene. under their thing and also i can see why they changed doctors because this guy a martini has medicine like the ama is not going to stand for this <laughs> <laughs> like, what is happening here i was just like ask me anything to calm down that just was, get yeah, drunk you'll be fine get drunk exactly but but bones was, was, but thing. I was, like, was kind of like that too are though they? right no, bones, bones will give not- you the medicine and then give you a shot to follow it. Yeah. He would at least examine you. He's not just quietly yeah. shaking things in the corner. Yeah. And then like, <laughs> Let's talk about your problems. What's going on? You know, like that's not his <laughs> MO anyway. Hmm. Uh, but yes. Yeah. So we scan I- you for like a brain parasite or something. <laughs> like- well, I think we may have gotten started off on the wrong foot here, guys. Let's. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's uh, start on the right one. Yeah, let's. And I blame Mike 
let's talk about what we I thought I was going to be the one that was going to poop on the show. But uh, let's talk about <laughs> what we did enjoy about this show. I thought um, you were, too. Oh, I've got it. I've got it. I did for this show, which is I really do love those hot pursuit sh- shots of the ship. You know, when the yeah. ship is like zooming and it's like all set to like some Desi Lou bongos. I was like, it's like the Copacabana in space. <laughs> I'm bored for it. Like, zoom. I enjoyed that a lot. Have you so. never seen the any episode of the original series I before? I have. I have. But that was part that I liked that they carried over to the original series. Yeah. And I enjoyed yeah. that. Hey, the question too, yeah. was, what do you like? That's something that I like. I liked I like it that very too. much too. Yeah. And the I song was liked- a little different, a little shorter, but we got more right. of the more of the ship and the, the mm-hmm. I liked it too. Yeah, the beginning and the end. I also liked that when they crashed on the planet, that clearly the people who crashed there, the survivors on the wreckage, uh, had 18 years worth of eyeliner and hairspray. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, Nina, life is not li- livable without a little zhuzhing. I was very yeah. happy for her. <laughs> That's very the only supply her. crate that survived the crash. Yeah. Well, hey, well, maybe they eyeliner. found maybe they found a plant that, you know. Maybe. Only maybe. works on the yeah. eyes. Who knows? Only works on the eyes. Well, I thought the same. And then they did explain that it's all just uh, an illusion. An illusion. Yeah. So Th- see- that's what they think humans look like. Overly oh. makeup people. Yeah. <laughs> Can I say something that was overly makeup, but I really loved it? And yes. maybe this is different for you guys. I don't I don't know. But um, one of the things that I really, really loved was how like Spock, because he, again, was one of my favorite people and he actually was in this, looked like an original Muppet, like how the old Muppets look way different from the new Muppets. Like his eyebrows were out of control. I was just like, <laughs> I was like, hold on, I'm trying to give you a- no, look You can see Ryan Ryan's background. There we go. There's like no the flat. Giant eyebrows. They're trying to make him into an isosceles triangle or there something. There we go. There we go. Yeah. There we go. I'm trying to give myself some Spock eyebrows to put you in there. <laughs> but they're huge and so fuzzy and I love them. So that kind of changes you, you. Yeah. Doesn't it? <laughs> guys, Spock your eyebrows if you if you feel like it. It's a, a setting on Zoom. Spock them out. Make it happen. Ooh. Really enjoy yourself. Well, so what I what I was feeling when I was watching this, and I think Michael, you were saying someone, someone mentioned this, this is kind of like a pilot for strange new worlds, which is the new mm-hmm. Pike series mm-hmm. that's coming out in Katie May. Yeah. Katie, Katie in just, in just you a couple months. You kidding me, Ryan. I'm sorry. Get used to it. And, <gasps> uh, <laughs> <I'm just> <laughs> uh, it was Katie that said it, of course, everybody knows, but yeah. Right. Katie. I mean, it's like, it feels like this is a pilot for the series that we're going to get. And I'm sure they're treating it as such. And this, when I was watching this, it just made me look forward to that new show that's coming out even more than I already am. I'm, I'm very excited about that new show. And it did make me think a little sadly, that cult character, that, that lady, that kind of the younger lady where he's like, mm-hmm. well, how many times have I told you? She's like, it's right here, idiot. Um <laughs> They've changed her into an alien, like a Darth Maul looking alien or something like that for the new Strange New World thing. That made me a little sad because I'm always like, why did you have to change? Why not just add a add a Darth Maul alien? And, you know, yeah, because it's like that that character that they, they got this new alien character and it's called Yeoman Colt or whatever. And I'm like, But that's not we remember. Colt. Uh, I mean, I guess she was a ginger, but come on, like yeah. you got it. That's a bit of a jump. Very good. And also, who is this? Who is the Patsy guy? Po- right. He remind me of the guy Potsy from uh, Happy Days. Potsy. Oh, knock off. The redhead off. Yeah. 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 Like the navigator. He, yeah. he, was, he was so lost pushing those buttons at the helm. <laughs> he was yeah. just like, how do I? I'm going <laughs> to. But he did have a very athletic jump down to shoot the thing. I don't know if you guys noticed that, like when the, the door closed on the planet and he like jumped down. I was like, whoa, this guy's an athlete. Mm-hmm. He turned around and joined Spock. Mm-hmm. So that was cool. <laughs> oh, gosh. I just I look at it and I'm I'm trying to see when watching the episode what they took from these characters and turn them into the icons that we have. We have Sulu. We have Chekhov. We have Uhura. And I'm just sitting here staring like, how did they get 
the A to B, because it's just so different. I wasn't expecting to be this different. That's why I think it was like a, a reset. Like they, they yeah. basically didn't take this episode and go with it. They just said, all right, it's kind of like a page one rewrite where you keep the concept, you know, and they, they kept one character, I think just one character, Spock. Yeah. And then they're like, okay, well, you know, I'll just hang on to this one thing because he's the one unique or different thing about this, this pilot. And then they even changed him though. Look, he's smiling and giggling. He's like, I'm Commander Spock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Even he's different. Well, I thought that scene was stupid. They're like, oh, there's these singing plants. Let's touch them. This, these alien plants. Let's touch them. That's a good touch idea. It. Like I have what my friends affectionately call KDHD because I will Very go good. and do anything and just like experience <laughs> it in pretty lights and shiny things. Even I know you don't touch shiny leaves. Well, on an alien world, lesson. like scan yeah. it first. You don't know what you're getting into. Okay. He's a science and officer. He should know this. Not only that, but like, why would anybody like, they were like, hey, we want to show you a secret. Can you go off with this woman alone so she can <laughs> show you a secret? I was like, this is why you need women on the landing party. Because no woman will be, <laughs> if a guy She's like, I heard that like, before. Don't I, do it. Don't do I, it. I need to show you my secret. I would be like, can I yeah. bring a friend? So like, <laughs> Number one would have like grabbed him by the back. Don't go to a second yeah. location. Yes, no. Gosh, why no. would you do that? I'm like, you're on an alien planet. That's just a dumb move, bro. <laughs> like, I also did not enjoy the sexism <laughs> of the show, which was brought up by oh, Michael earlier. Like, I'm not I, used to having a woman on the bridge. Yeah, I left really so like, oh, hard. You're different. You're other, one of the good ones. Saying it straight to the other woman and being like, but not you, babe. But not you, babe. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, what is wrong with you? I had it's tears so rolling down my face. It and was when, so funny. And when they were picking people to go on the away team and it was like, sorry, number one, your vagina is grounded. I was just <laughs> like, what? Well, in their defense, if, he did if say- If we transport you down, it won't come oh, she's yeah, the most experienced. she's the most experienced. That's why. Like, please. I actually please. wrote that down in my notes because I was like, oh, that's good to know for Strange New Worlds. I actually was like, yeah. all of the things that I know about Strange New Worlds- they, I feel like they really, really studied this episode because this is what the only thing they have to pull from, right? And so mm -hmm. one of those things, I was like, okay, good to know. Now we know that number one, Una uh, in mm -hmm. Strange New Worlds is the most experienced officer that he has. We, you know, we, mm -hmm. we know that's going to be the case. It's not going to be Spock. It's going to be her. And it was, there were a lot of well, things in, dis in Discovery, in. she took care of the Enterprise while Pike was like searching for Spock, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm hmm. But yeah, there are a lot of things where I kind of made a mental note or I wrote something down where I was like, oh, I bet you that's going to glue into Strange New Worlds, except or maybe, maybe not the sexism. Get left, yeah. Maybe just get left behind. Like the line when they're on the one of the fantasies where the woman's green, where they're like, funny how oh, they are on this planet. They like being taken advantage of. I was like, looks like he landed on planet rapey. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, oh, the whole the subtitles because I always watch the subtitles for like all the little details that they add in <laughs> and one person is like Middle Eastern music plays like wait what and it's what? just like all this stuff that I'm like okay did, were these typed up in ancient times known as the well 60s? you have to understand where they're talking about the Middle East of space so I yeah saying. I was like this is in a, a fantasy yeah. in no way he also did say the op the opposite end of the galaxy or something like that and I was like excuse me right. my knowledge of Star Trek tells me that is not the case they are a very close <laughs> part you of the aren't galaxy in the delta quadrant like right. mm -hmm. but <laughs> another thing actually that that did make me think of strange new worlds is that first of all they they gave a ton of backstory for pike which was really cool first of all they said he's from mojave which was really cool mm -hmm. it, it mm -hmm. kind of created a character for me and then it showed him with his horse and you know be, he's a rider and he's super happy there and we know that in strange new worlds it's at some point it's going to open up or that that he's on his horse riding his horse whose name yes. was i forgot what the horse's name was but well the poster are, has it Right, exactly. So that's what I'm saying. He's got his jean jacket. He's riding his horse. And it, it just kind of, 
it, it tells me that, you know, the people that made Strange New Worlds, they watch this and they're like, every detail that they could get out of the characters, they're kind of, you know, infusing it into this new show. And, you know, that just made me again, more excited for it. Hopefully they'll change Spock a bit though. Yeah. <laughs> But he's so happy. Look at him. Look he doesn't happy. deserve he's to be happy. He's a Vulcan. <gasps> how dare you? He's, well, he's also only Vulcan. half Vulcan. Yeah, yeah. He's half Vulcan. The yeah, other half true. of him is very joyful. <laughs> yes. Tango. That was the horse's name. How cute Tango. is that? Tango. Aww. Tango's cute, and I love that he got sugar in his pocket for Tango. That yeah. Was That's planet. I was like, too. oh, they thought of it. <laughs> was it? <laughs> oh no. Just imagine sticky pockets for the rest of your days. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Ants everywhere. Ants everywhere. No. Not oh, good. The horror. <laughs> well, it's starting to feel like I'm the only person that somewhat liked this show. Is that right? I enjoyed it. I mean, if, are we allowed to say that now? I don't know. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it. I had a good time, but there are definitely some things that are super dated on the yeah. show, like that we've explained. But as long as you go into it with that context that like, oh, this was the time it was written or, you know, like, and, and exactly. And be like, well, this is what we're watching. And sometimes, you know, things from the sixties just will not translate to to today's world and what we, you know, like what's acceptable. Like, I'm I'm like, no wonder this was not aired. (laughs) Like, you know what I mean? There's certain things that I'm like, oh, well, they needed more. I don't know just more finesse and more I love the characters that they did choose to go on the actual right. you know the the actual pilot and beyond you mean so Spock? I'm, yeah well <laughs> no I mean like the other characters that replaced oh, other non-Spock people like I like the replacement for their their original right, vision right, right. of what this was mm-hmm. and I, well, I, I do... think that it made me appreciate Kirk more you know I do remember hearing that, that um yeah. I think a lot of like the tv execs had a problem with a woman first officer i think that's one one thing she's the part that i enjoyed the most oh obviously (laughs) but i'm just saying like back in 1964 was she the eve we never know no no hopefully we'll find out in strange new worlds oh boy oh my god (laughs) (laughs) so invasive Uh, they're like she sometimes fantasizes about you really really she does okay (laughs) okay gene Oh, oh no. gosh. Well, it's <laughs> like Jean. what I'll tell you what. <laughs> seeing her and her character and knowing she comes back, you can right. see the little badassery threads even mm-hmm. in this pilot. Cuz that's the yeah. way I viewed this episode was this is going to be basically a very primitive show bible pilot kind of for strange new worlds mm-hmm. because you have these developed characters in little development, but and that's the one thing I wish they, I really hope they keep going. And I think they will, is that she's just going to be the badass on the bridge. And I'm yeah. totally cool with that. <laughs> yeah. Rebecca Romaine's going to knock that out of the park. Yeah. We're very oh, excited so about that. By the way, Michael, you brought something up initially. You said that you thought I would hate the, the sets and, and production design. I actually was very impressed with it. I made several notes mm. saying how big was their budget? I was really impressed with how many sets they had for some pilot thing. I would have thought that a pilot, you don't have that kind of money and you need to shoot something on like two sets basically. But Mm -hmm. I was like, dude, they're really for the sixties. They really went all out. I was actually really, but back then, like a camera costs like a quarter and a film costs (laughs) like a nickel. (laughs) And then like uh, pantyhose cost two a uh, half a cent. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, they grew on but, trees uh, back then. I remember and that. Also, I hated you, it. Yeah. Like, look at the rocks. It just looks like crumpled up paper. I mean, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. How much do you have? To, the paper costs. That's like uh, two two bits for for like a thousand pages. But the know, amount like, of different <laughs> sets. I mean, they they built a set practically for every scene. I was like, they're just throwing money away at this point. How they have yeah, that? They have- they even had like that medieval like cutaway like in Westworld with uh, that right. fight with the dude and I'm, I'm yeah I was just like this is fun you wow. know what I mean like that's the adventure part that I I loved uh, mm-hmm. about this episode like uh, but you that know, totally could have flaws. been taken from another an existing set I mean maybe there was a movie that's mm-hmm. what I'm thinking yeah, yeah cuz most pilots even if you had a ton of money you wouldn't want to waste all that money building a set you could put it into different things to help with your idea so 
mm-hmm. or just pocket it because apparently that happens too. Like there should be other, there'd be other things you'd spend the money on. So like but green I'm surprised paint. That- Green, like green body paint. <laughs> right, green body right. paint. Very important. But I'm surprised that Ryan thinks that I hated it or that I, I did not enjoy it. Well, I initially my, my, my... predicted that you'd like it, but you just right. seem a little a little less cheery on it right now. Well, I mean, you know, when I what I said in the opening is I said I expected a slow, interesting, mm-hmm. a little boring at times, fascinating, cool, bad show. So I like. You know, there's the there's the good parts mm. and there's the bad parts. Maybe um, we've in general been speaking about the bad parts, uh, but the good parts is just the story. I thought the story was great. I mean, it's just like mm. this is classic science fiction story. You know, these these al- these brain pulsing aliens that can make you see whatever you want. And and also another thing that Star Trek does really well is giving you these conundrums, right? Yeah. So it's like, here he's on this planet. He can have anything he wants. He goes home to a grassy Mojave. Um, and I guess in the future, they re- re- terraformed the Mojave Desert. To <laughs> Is that even healthy for our planet yeah. to like eliminate deserts? I don't think so. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's but, not uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> but my point is that you have this kind of like, it's like a classic science fiction storyline mm-hmm. that you read in like a Ray Bradbury book. Um, and, and, and Star Trek was great at that. I mean, these, these classic stories of like the city of the edge of forever, the squire of Gothos, like, uh, these, these kinds of cool stories where like, you've, you've got these cool ideas that are brought to life, these cool science fiction ideas that are brought to life on the big screen of Star Trek. And they, they have these kind of dilemmas. So what are you going to do? Or you could be on this planet, be with a woman who is any woman you've ever dreamt of, of being with be in any location mm. that you can possibly imagine um, mm. and repopulate the human population. So it's like, do you do that? Or, or is that because- You're also forgetting prisons. a lot about the genetics and how that would end up, but- And the fact that she's <laughs> super old and probably couldn't have- True, exactly. Anyway. She's aged. That's the oh. thing. The refrigerator doesn't stay stocked forever. Like you gotta- <laughs> I'm just saying. I think that, like, when they showed her at the end, though, I think it was less that she was aged and more that, like, she got put she together crashed, weird. Yeah, she got put together yeah. weird. Yeah, like, and they're like, oh, they didn't they know how to put together humans. I'm like, stuff. I don't think they just guessed. Oh, maybe they're crooked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, like, Telosians we look, like look this. very similar to humans. Like, take yeah. a, take a guess yeah. based on your own people. <laughs> like, yeah, just exactly. make their their shoulders normal. You know. I, Guess that. I will say that I agree with you, Michael. Like, I definitely. I'm glad you said what, that. You know what? <laughs> finally, finally, I can agree with you on many things, and also this, because I stopped taking notes at a certain point because I was just enjoying the story. I was just mm. being lost in the story with the character, wondering how he's going to get out, wondering if he's going to get out, wondering if the people trying to get him out from the other side were going to get him out, like. And I don't know, it, I think that that's something that Star Trek really does well, because that's what I love about Star Trek is that you can get lost in these otherworldly adventures, you know, like, and I, I'm one of those people who loves science fiction and I love reading science fiction and to go f- like to get lost in something that's totally different and totally different and something that you can't experience is, is a beautiful thing to experience. And I think Star Trek does it well. However... I will say that I kind of stopped taking notes or wanted to because I felt as though they just kept repeating the same thing, which was, okay, now you're here and now you're there. And I found myself thinking, look, in a real television episode. Modern. Right. Well, or even even Star Trek of 1966, I I feel like every one of those five to 10 minute scenes where he's experiencing something new could have been condensed and condensed but, and condensed because it was just going it on for an actual episode. It's, yeah, we but get it. Also, yeah. like the technicalities of making an, an aired TV pilot, you have to have time for commercial breaks, which is why it's a 50 minute pilot instead of a 65 minute pilot. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. so yeah. they this are was six, this was 68 it. minutes. But yeah, you know what I mean? Like this is unaired. And even if they wanted to air it, they couldn't have, they would have had to shorten it yeah. up and cut it up and edit it up. And I feel like it does, 
to your point, like help the, the actual fiction of it to condense some of these scenes to cut out the unnecessary fat from these episodes so that we, we get a tighter, cooler adventure. Yeah, and so I thought either that or just go for it. Add 15 minutes, create <laughs> create a, yeah. bad, a, a bad guy ship that's out there, you know, the Klingons or, or the whatever the race yeah. is of the day and they're coming in and then you give the other characters their moments to shine because then you've got a couple people on the planet Mm -hmm. trying to help him you've got number one up on the ship uh trying to talk with the the other ship you know and it raises the stakes it's like they need to hurry up and save their captain because these Mm -hmm. bad guys are coming or there's this battle or something like that and then suddenly yeah you've got a much bigger scope and a much more interesting thing and it's breaking up so i was like you got to do one or the other is but what I, I would talking. argue that they weren't trying to create something super exciting. They were trying to tell a unique science fiction story, which I think if you're looking for that in mm-hmm. every episode of the next of the original series, you're going to be sorely disappointed, Ryan. Because oh, I know shit. you have not watched every episode. So. <laughs> what? I have seen another call out. I have seen wow. so many. The gloves are off, people. I've seen all 37, nine, all the episodes. That doesn't sound like you believe it. But Ryan, even it. I've seen all the episodes. Come oh, on. Boy. You hadn't seen this one. Well, this doesn't count. <laughs> this is off of the main list. I think that's really cool. So, oh, Michael, did you end up saying if you had seen this, uh, this episode before? Oh, so I have. And I'll tell you, I want another thing. I've seen it a couple times, uh, mostly because... They kind of did air this episode. They later chopped it into the only two-part episode in all of the Star Trek original series, and they named it The Menagerie. Mm -hmm. And they did add some additional scenes where Captain Pike is like in that little wheelchair thingy um, where he can only answer yes or no. I mean, we've got way better technology than that these days, but I digress again. Um, So he can only answer yes or no by beeping once or twice. And so they kind of like, tune into his memories somehow and project them on a screen and they're like judging him on something or no no they're, they're judging spock i think um that's what it is they're judging spock to see if he like abandoned his captain i, I don't remember exactly it's been a while since i've seen it but uh, but then they end up showing this whole episode in pike's memories mm-hmm. and and to spoiler um if you haven't seen the ep- original episode from back in the, in the 60s um uh, Pike ends up going back to the planet because he's in this, he's immobilized in this thing. So he can go to this planet now where he can just live out his ma- imagination and his, his fantasies. And so he reconnects with, with the girl. So. Oh, Vina. See they tried to connect the dots. <laughs> See you guys. I thought that was a brilliant way to bring it. First of all, reuse this recycle of this episode that they were never able to air. Mm-hmm. Um, and then yeah. also to, like give it a happy ending too. Well, they spent so much money on the pilot from what you can see with like, if they bought the sets, they bought the uniforms and they made it all like use it. <laughs> yep. All right. You are right, Katie. It is now time to talk to Bridget Fitzgerald. If you can believe Hi. that. Hi. Hello. Woo! It's me, Bridget Fitzgerald. Round of applause. Round of applause. The one and only. Big time sci-fi fan. Here it comes, Fast and Furious. Bridget, question number one. How are Bridget you? Bridget Redchair. Bridget Redchair. <laughs> that, question number one was, who am I? How are okay. you? How am I? I'm great. <laughs> I'm doing great. My life is great. I'm very excited. Uh, everything is, is going well. I was in a, a movie that was on, um, oh gosh, on Roku channel. Uh, that was on the slider this past Christmas as one of their featured Christmas movies, which was called nice. Christmas Lovers Anonymous. Yeah, I was very excited because my my soon to be sister in law uh, sent me a photo of it like being projected on her thing as like an advertisement that was you know, on the screen. Wow. Favorite thing. And I was like, this is awesome. And I saw myself I've seen myself multiple times in a movie on a plane. Uh, There's a movie that's also available on the Roku channel called Under the Stadium Lights, where I speak entirely in Spanish and Espanol. And I saw it on, it is, yeah, it's a drama with- Muy interesante. um, (laughs) Ay, Dios mío. Uh, Yes, that's- I don't speak another language. That's how I (laughs) 
Honestly, Spanish is my third language. I took French in, in really? school. And then uh, I, even though I'm Latina, like my, I wasn't raised with it in the home. And actually only 47% of second generation uh, Latin people speak Spanish primarily. Uh, Can I stop you there and say Go that everybody in the live chat right now is probably noticing <laughs> that she said 47%, which is a very important Star Trek number. Please continue. Oh, is it? What, is, what does that mean? What they just that? use the, the number 47 all the time in Star Trek. Like they're like shields at 47% or star base 47 or they're 47 well, it's survivors. It's a great sounding number, but it's actually, it that was the, the one that I read because I, it made me feel really good that I was less alone, that I wasn't raised with Spanish in the home. You know what I mean? Like Aww, it made yeah. me feel good that like, you know, that's like half, yeah. half people, half second generation know Spanish from primarily and half don't like me. And so I actually, uh, it was so bizarre. Like that I was asked like the week before, I mean, I was about to get on a plane and like Lawrence Fishburne is in this movie. Like it was a, it was wow. a big deal Ooh. to be in this movie. I got flown to like Dang. Minnesota to shoot this. And I was very excited. Ooh, for it. And I'm like, it, exactly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. And I was very nervous about it because uh, they were like, so the other two people who are cast as your kids, which Hollywood, this is rude. Like one of them was like four <laughs> years younger than me and he, he's your son. I'm like, okay, oh. great. Wonderful. Yep. <laughs> great. Great life. <laughs> great life I'm living. Wonderful. Yep. I, I really appreciate this. They were like, uh, so both of them can speak in Spanish. Would you mind changing all your scenes to Spanish? And I didn't want to get fired. So I was like, sure, I'm going to do this. Sure. I will translate it myself. My mother, bless her heart is my, my dialect coach. And so she and I worked like relentlessly so that I could speak in Spanish for this movie and do all the dialogue that I needed. And then they even asked me to improvise in Spanish, which I never thought I would be doing, wow. but I, I did do that. It was hardcore. And then like, I saw a review once from like somebody in Boston who called me out. He was like, Bridget Fitzgerald with her element, her, her high school Spanish. And I was like, oh, you think I took it in high school? Good for me. <laughs> you know there I mean? you go. Yeah. Like, I'll take that. I'll thank, thank you so much. Give me much. more you know experience. I mean? like, thank you. Yeah. You know, it's like, I feel like it, it wasn't a, a, like, it was one of the most challenging things I've ever done. And I'm really proud of myself for being brave. So wow. that's, awesome. that's the story of that movie. From, from Congratulations. And what is the movie called again? It's called Under the Stadium Lights. It's a football drama with Lawrence Fishburne and uh, Milo Gibson, who's the son of Mel Gibson, who's the plays the coach. It's all based on a true life story uh, about some people in Texas. Uh, so everybody check school. that out. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. That's really cool. Uh, by the way, Bridget, because everybody wants to know. And yes, sure. Michael, I've seen every episode of every Star Trek series ever except for the last three episodes of short treks, because I'm saving them. And yes, yes. some oh. episodes, some many of this episodes of the original series, because I really yeah. don't like old stuff. It's just yeah. so I told you. it's unwatchable to me. Old stuff is all old television, not Star Trek. But Bridget, Especially what's your Star Trek, though. no, what what's your favorite Star Trek series? A Star Trek The Next Generation. And I think you know this. You're leading me into this because I actually <laughs> My my one of my best friends, uh, we used to watch in her basement all Star Trek Next Generation. And we like created a Aww. drinking game with like root beer, like where people if they said oh, engage, you would drink and that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, it was super fun. Like that's what we were we were into. I'm, I, it makes me happy. And I watched every episode of of Star Trek Next Generation. So this the original series, I've only watched like here and there a couple episodes, but mm -hmm. Next Gen has my heart. Uh, so for sure. Aww. All right. Well, that's going to lead us into everybody check this out in the comments below. Go find Bridget Fitzgerald's goodies. Click on them. Oh. Follow her. Yes. I got goodies. Oh. Did you hear that? <laughs> goodies, people. Yes. Click yeah. on them. And Click also on them. Do go it. follow uh, Katie on uh, social media. What, what's your uh, Twitter <laughs> handle, of course? Bye. -bye. Yes, my everything handle is at weather underscore Katie. And that's where you can find me. Um, pretty simple. I, I post fun videos about the weather and occasionally other chaotic things. <laughs> Chaotica. All right. Chaotica. That's actually a so, cosplay I'm trying to get for Star Trek Las Vegas. Chaotica. It's proving to be difficult. Chaotica. Chaotica. Yes. Yes. I just started I thinking it. though, uh, 
Bridget, when you were, oh, when you were saying what, that you hadn't seen the original series or whatever, I just realized this is going to be a tough bottom line for us because mm -hmm. the second question is, would we watch the second? But then is the second Strange New Worlds or is the second... Uh, Star Trek. Yeah, episode one. Anyway, so yeah. it's time for the terrible twos. Bottom line. We just call it the bottom line only. That's what it's called. It's bottom line. It's not terrible to use. Bottom line. All right. It's the final two questions of the show. Everybody knows. Everybody's like, thank God they went through that bottom line shtick faster than they usually do. Here it is. <laughs> Question number one is Michael Kenyon Rosenberg on a scale of one to 10. What would you rate this first episode of Star Trek or this pilot episode entitled The Cage? Um, so I, you know, I mentioned I very much enjoyed the story behind it, the kind of like not fighting for to save the universe, not uh, fighting some crazy alien contender, but it's just a simple, more of a simple story about, oh, the captain goes down the planet, gets abducted, and he, he's, he meets this girl and, and everything's a fantasy. So I love that. I mean, it's just, I love those stories in, in the original series. Um, but what I don't care about with the original series and this pilot in particular is just how long it takes to them to get to that. Um, I agree with Ryan that a lot of, could be of cut from it, but I mean, that's, just, I guess how storytelling was back then. I mean, if you remember when we've watched the original up the first episode of Dr. Who, it was super slow. Oh um, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but, but you still have these, these cool stories. So um, given that there's the, the good parts and then there's the bad parts, I'll just go straight down the middle and say five out of 10. Wowie. Hmm. Uh, what about you? Uh... Katie? You know, I wish we could break it into subcategories because costuming would get like a one. Set design would be a lot higher. But overall, just because of what they said to number one, I'm giving it a three. Um, and the reason, the, the main reason why is that it has room to grow that way. Like, I'm looking at this as a precursor to Strange New Worlds. So, you know, every pilot has to score low, seemingly, unless you're Voyager. But it's like, it, it can improve. And I might come back and rewatch this and re reevaluate the score, depending on how they extend the lore in strange new worlds or was next generation actually um katie did yeah. you just try to sneak in that voyager is the only good star trek pilot in my opinion enterprise is pretty good too but oh, she uh, must not have seen uh, lower deep decks. space okay. or deep space nine lower decks is pretty good yeah <laughs> the best ever. but no but voyager is uh, voyager <laughs> in my opinion is the best star trek uh pilot just saying well it has lucky, tornadoes in it made of plasma. What do you want from me? Lucky for you, <laughs> part of Virtual Trek Con 3 is going to be the first ever Star Trek Awards show called the Lappy, Lappy. Awards. And one of the things that people voted on, one of the categories was best pilot, best legacy pilot ever, including this one and the animated series Voyager, Deep Space Nine, Next Generation, and Enterprise. So mm. we're going to find out which mm. is really the best according to all the fans that voted in the polls and right now we're just going like shit i didn't get to vote i you missed have voted. it sorry i you didn't must know have i didn't know so well you can oh, at least well. tune into the lappies mm -hmm. that's true that's true mm -hmm. hey so i have my uh, dress oh <laughs> perfect bridget scale of one to yeah, ten my what dress would you give too. oh man scale of one to ten I feel like I'm a very generous person, guys. Like I'm, I'm gonna give it a six. Like, it, why not? It left, mm -hmm. it led a lot to the, the creativity of what would eventually become the series. No, I don't enjoy the sexism of it, so I'm gonna dock them for that. But also, you know, they did create, you know, a whole new world, and it led to mm -hmm. some really great television down the line. So I'm gonna give it a six. A strange mm -hmm. new world. Oh, oh god! Yeah. Nice. No, no, I'm not sorry at all. You can keep going. You, you would. 
you do it. He's not strange, though. fantastic oh, boy in a view. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, well, I try Just my tell hardest. Tell us, make it so. Not to. Sorry. <laughs> and then we'll go. We'll go. Yes. Boldly where we <laughs> haven't. Oh my gosh! Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry Ryan. All right, Ryan, you were no, trying I'm to just think. In, I'm just enjoying the show. You guys go right ahead. I'll we finished. No, no, no they're, they're never done. <laughs> we, we could, this could be like that nice little fan edit before the show starts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> Mike would never. Uh, <laughs> all right. So I try not to dock a show too much for being a product of its time. Doctor mm-hmm. Whom was one where I was like, look, it wasn't <laughs> very good. It didn't do anything for me. But I, I, you know, I'm trying not to say, you know, the, it was in black and white, you know, because everything was back then. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm trying, you know, it, I, I'm going to knock Just it a little bit. Out. Out. Basically, yeah. I think the concept was phenomenal because not a lot of things were doing this back in 1964. I think that is really what got the show picked up was just the Mm -hmm. concept was just the idea of people out on a spaceship out exploring. I think that's really basically it because hardly anything else got kept from this pilot episode to where it goes. Mm -hmm. So that's really high marks for me. I thought that the, all the sets and the production design, I was very impressed with, but probably just because I expect it to be way shittier because I remember seeing old, (laughs) old original series shows (laughs) All the old original series shows, all the sets are made out of like cardboard. I remember one episode, like somebody clearly bumped into the camera or something because like the camera's like this and it goes like this for a second. And you, yeah. you even hear the cameraman go like, oh, or something. It was like when <laughs> Dottie was cutting a hole in a, in a door panel. Go back and watch that episode. He's he's cutting a hole like that. And then the ca- anyway, so I was expecting it to be old and crappy, like regular 60 stuff. And I was actually a little surprised little better than i expected uh i'm giving it a six. Oh, all right twinsy wow actually no you know what i put no actually i put i put a six rude no you already put it in you already put it in sorry locked in done Done. i actually put a 6.5 so i'm gonna stick with that sorry and and i'm not sorry because all the star trek fans are like that's better punk we were gonna get you (laughs) anyway for the purposes of this podcast, we all had to watch the first episode, the pilot episode of Star Trek, the original series entitled The Cage. But now that the podcast is over and we're free to move about the internet, Michael Kenyon Rosenberg, would you watch the first episode? Would you watch the next episode if this was whatever? You know what I'm saying? Yes. The next episode. Um, let's see. If, if, if they had aired this, Back in 1965 or when, or, you know, like before the, 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 well, 64, but I mean, maybe they would have aired it before like the first, the, the man trap or something like that. Then mm-hmm. um, I would have definitely been on board to watch the man trap, the, the first second episode of, of Star Trek. I definitely would have. Now, if I had never seen any Star Trek before, if I was like living under a rock or, or in like, Raised by wolves in, in like in the forest somewhere. Um, and WTF I was in raised this, by wolves. We did. We, we did saw check. that one already. Yeah, so check it uh, out. Season two is out now though. Now though, it's really good. Um, but uh, yeah, if I was like a caveman frozen in ice, and then I was brought unfrozen and brought into the world and taught to speak English, um, and then I had never seen Star Trek before, and so they showed me this episode, mm-hmm. I would have said, "No, what the." And this is amazing that they could show me the TV. This I can't believe I can't believe I'm watching this. Um, but if I was a normal person and I'd never seen Star Trek before, then and I saw this, I would not watch the next episode. But um, so two out of three Michaels would watch the next episode. Two out of three Michaels. There you go. Because yeah, I'm yeah. a normal person, I would watch the next episode. All right. And I have. Oh. I've seen it. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Uh, definitive Katie. answers here <laughs> yeah Katie would you watch the next episode I would and I would because I'm interested in the characters 
Hmm. Like I would want to know more. And that, that kind of reflects on a lot of the shows that I watched the first episode of just naturally in my life is do I like the characters because they're the main reason you're going to watch the show. And I do like the characters in this one. So I'd watch it. You know, the only character that stays is Spock. Yeah. Yeah. I but mean, she just, wouldn't just know that I... watching that first. She might be disappointed exactly. watching the next one. Yeah. And like, who's this other? What? There's more? Oh. What? Yeah, I might be disappointed in the end. But yeah. uh, just because I want mainly number one is who I'm there to see. But now, however uh, many years later, we're back. Yeah, we did it. Bridget, Woo. would you watch the second episode or the next episode of your own volition out of excitement for the characters? Well, you just answered the question for me. Yes. Like that's literally what I did immediately after this episode is I started watching oh. the man trap because I was like, I miss the real ones. <laughs> can, we just, can we get the real ones in please? Thank you. Thank you. Beta test. That was been lovely. Now let's, let's get into the real Very nice. Thank you so much. Yes. And so it, I have already started watching the man trap. So to I had clean, to your, cleanse to your palate. No, I'm just, I, it just made me, you know, cause I've never watched it all the way through and I'm like, huh, three seasons, that's doable. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was like, okay, maybe this is my next project. You know, five, if you include the, five if you include the animated series. Ah, yes. Okay. Yeah. I think okay. it's, what is it like 71 episodes of original series? People can correct yeah, me in the chat. I think it's but, something like that. And 26 well, episodes of the animated series. I know that I, for sure. I'm not concerned about it uh, episode wise because I just finished <laughs> Survivor and there are 40 <gasps> seasons of Survivor. So hi, yes, uh, hi. I've auditioned you, for you the did? show. Nice. Uh, I would love to. Do you know how to make fire? Please don't go on there if you don't I know how to make fire. I started making fires in our driveway to entertain the neighborhood kids when I was a child. So wow. <laughs> All right. Well. We voted we, kids out of the cul-de-sac for fun. Like, this is... Uh, wow, wow. All right, well, I'm going to vote for you if I ever get to see you on the show. I'm going to be like, Katie, Katie must survive. Win. So, uh, yeah, yeah, so I'm not scared about the amount of episodes. I think that this one is highly doable. <laughs> Once I've yeah, done that's that, less like, than 40 I can do seasons. anything. Fun. Great. Yeah, wonderful. Get in insane. line. 40 up 40 seasons is crazy and by the Isn't way katie it? i played with fire a lot when i was a kid too oh, um, it explains a lot doesn't it <laughs> it really does <laughs> uh the short answer is yes i would watch the next episode um trying to take myself a star trek fan out of it because obviously i'd watch the next episode because i'm a star trek fan trying to take that out of it it would be much less of a vehement yes and an obvious yes but it would be still like a, a yeah like a this is a, it's a new concept. It's a new idea. It's a new way of storytelling. It was good enough. You, it makes you kind of wonder like what's going to be their, uh, their next, their next thing, uh, what, their repeat performance or what's, what's their going to be their next step. So what are they going to do next with this? It does make you a little curious for that. So that's four yeses, everybody big surprise. Although I, I was a little worried when everybody pooped on it at the beginning. I was like, oh man, am I going to be the high watermark? <laughs> no, you also, you have to take into account, there might have only been seven channels at that time. So it's really yeah. a good odds that people will continue to watch. <laughs> hmm. Well, I guess oh, that's man. about it, everybody. So if you'd like us to review a show in the comments below, type in WTF and the show, you could say, WTF Star Trek the animated series. WTF, or, wait, we already did that. Lock and key. WTF Ooh. Picard. Mm -hmm. WTF. Yeah, the we did Anything. Picard. Ooh. And we the Orville. Picard, right. Picard was number WTF number one. Mm -hmm. Really? Oh. Oh man. See? Bad. That oh hey, no. What? <laughs> Not Picard, but WTF oh. back oh. then. I was we're, oh. we're still trying to Why? figure it like, out. Watch like, our very first I don't know one. how to take that. <laughs> Like, wait a second, I love the WTF okay. Matt Smith Doctor Who. Yeah, that's the one you guys have to see. Well, yes. actually, technically, we'd there have to go. do uh, he's my favorite doctor, too. Yes. So he's my favorite doctor as well. But I we thought he was Dr. Eleven, Christopher Eccleston. Yes. Okay, well, you also have to do because technically, every time you regenerate, the, the show changes. No, so no, no actually, I will fight you on this, Michael. Eccl 
Christopher Eccleston. Like no, I know, I know what happens in Doctor Who. I can't Who, escape. But I'm Doctor just saying Who. that Christopher Never. Eccleston, Doctor Who, is, restarts the series, that's and that starts with Episode restart. One. Yeah. Yeah. But you yeah. also so have to, that is, that's the But we watch the first theory. of things and that's watch episode the, one. Watch the first of Matt Smith's Doctor. It's but that's like, not in episode you, one. I will argue you, Star Trek Picard, with Star Trek The Next Generation, you have Picard. Star Trek Picard, you also have Picard, but you have different things. So you can break up a franchise into different segments. So you no. could break up Doctor Who. Picard actually had an episode things. one and Star Trek The Next Generation actually had an episode one. And today and we did Smith episode, episode zero. One, the eleventh hour. Yeah, guys, got it's not Mom, episode Dad, one. Please That's stop season fighting. something What's episode going one. On? <laughs> we watched season <laughs> one episode Bridget, one. Let's get zero. out of here, Bridget. Yeah, I'm leaving. <laughs> We're I'm talking leaving about clearly. Doctor Who, and I have um, that is not I, for me. Hey, I, grab the Doctor Who. Doctor Who, Ninth Doctor. Who, ninth doctor. <laughs> okay, there you go. But I'll, this is the big question. This is the big question, everybody. Do you think it's acceptable for us to do now the man trap at some point someday? Or yes. since we only do the yes, first Stanford. episode of things. It is episode only the one. First... This was episode zero. Right. Why so would it so not technically we already broke the rules, right? In some way. So uh, we watched the, you the first episode so of the show, which can be the pilot. Exactly. So let us know in the comments what you think. <laughs> Are we breaking the rules if we if we do the man trap or are, do, are, do we have to do it at some point? Anyway, we yeah. want to thank Bridget Fitzgerald and meteorologist Katie Nicolau for making this so much Bye. fun. Because this Thanks is for having us. Thank you for having you guys. So and, uh, to see you all. Yeah, we love you. <laughs> and what I'm trying to say is that Star Trek, The Cage, seemed like a show that should have been called The Man Trap. But this oh, podcast I'm trying was to, you're so right. <laughs> I was gonna say we gotta talk about the podcast. What'd yeah. you say? Yeah, yeah. Oh, is this this podcast, podcast was fun. Oh yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I used up all my creativity on the first half. Oh uh, well, this podcast also used up all its creativity in the first half. <laughs> uh you go ahead, whoever. Yeah. <laughs> this podcast gave me life. I love this podcast. Big hearts. I rate this 10 out of 10. Aww. This podcast was my first socialization with people outside of work in over a month. (laughs) 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 But in a way, we are winning. Hashtag winning. You're my world. Yay. And you are my world to be explored. (laughs) Oh, that's scary. Uh, a strange new world. world. A strange new world. Uh, sort and of, so Ryan, he is I'm trying so to get out of here. I'm like, uh, he wants save us me, Sp- to go on, never stop, and make out with Spock some more. Keep giving him time. <laughs> All right. Guys, don't, don't let me keep going. I'll Everybody, going. just remember what Michael Kenyon Rosenberg likes to say save us, Mike, save us. Don't forget to Strange New World. And don't forget to register to be an organ donor. Please, 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 pretty please. Um, You can do while you're signing up for a a driver's license or registering your car. Or even better, you can go to Donate Life and register there. But after you're done with that, and only after, don't forget to watch the first of things. (laughs) 